Hello, it's Plus Reports, where we bring you some of the stories and events that made the news recently. And just in case you missed out on some of them, don't worry. We've got you covered in this edition. Welcome. I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. We are starting off on Education Appeal Fund, where the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has explained the rationale behind the 25 million Naira Education Appeal Fund by the government and people of Yobe State. The state, Senate president spoke at the Yobe State Education Fund raising held in Abuja, said the idea was to reposition the education sector and the state and avail the children of Yobe State, particularly the indigent ones, the opportunity to go to school and become useful to themselves and the society at large. The report is presented in our studio. At the occasion titled Yobe State Education Fundraising, Lawan, who is also an indigenous of Yobe State, said the situation in his state was good until the insurgents struck and caused incalculable damage in the state. The 25 billion is not going to solve all the problems, but definitely will reposition our educational sector better. And I want to make an appeal here. We want to have money. But there are some institutions that don't have to give us money. NTI, for example, give us slots for training of our teachers. We want to train our teachers. If you can't give us free, please charge us just the administrative costs. If there is one single sector that you can use to change the world is education. Speaking during the launching, Yobe State Governor May Malabuni stressed that the task of rejuvenating education in the state is far beyond the traditional treasury capacity of the state, hence the need to look elsewhere for support. According to him, the fund so generated will be channeled towards developing and maintaining a high standard of education philosophy, education policy, legal, regulatory, and institutional arrangement in the basic and secondary education subsector. Even as we put forward our best efforts, consequent to this challenge, we decided to approach our good selves, our potential benefactors, through this education fundraising event to seek your support in cash or in kind of endowment, seed fund, and to an estimated value of 25 billion naira. For us as governors, who are also directly involved in educational activities in our state, we know that education is the greatest antidote to poverty, and that we have a duty, indeed a responsibility, to take our people out of poverty. And if we educate them, definitely it is the first stage in the journey out of lifting them from poverty. The fundraising comes on the heels of the recovery of the education sector following the de declaration of a state of emergency by Governor May Malabuni-led administration and the subsequent inauguration of a 21-member committee to raise funds for the education sector. In attendance were prominent personalities which include governors, members of the National Assembly, former governors, members of the traditional ruling class, emirs, mayors and chiefs, captains of industries, business tycoons and other notable guests. Moving on to River State, apparently more efforts are being geared towards addressing issues of oil theft in the Niger Delta region. River State Commando of the NSCDC has called for more synergy between security agencies in this regard. 
NSCDC State Commandant Abu Tambawa made us call while receiving six suspected oil thieves and 12 exhibits from the Nigerian Navy ships. NNS, but finder in Port Harcourt River State Capital. Illegal oil bunkering activities and oil theft in the state has since caused the nation economic waste. The NSCDC River State Command has taken delivery of six suspected vandals and 12 boats laden with illegally refined petroleum product from the Nigerian Navy NNS Pathfinder. The Commandant Abu Tambo expressed his pleasure over the colossal waste oil theft has caused the nation. He restated the resolve of the command and the charge by Commandant General of the NSCDC to put a stop to bunkering activities in the state. Affirm our determination, courage, and for the upkeep of this exhibit with high level of integrity. And assuredly, necessary investigations will follow and further necessary action for possible prosecution will be done by the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps. The Base Operations Officer, NNS Pathfinder, Commander Omar Sidi, attributed the arrest and seizures to the launch of Operation River Dominance. This entails constant monitoring of activities on the waterways and creeks up to Carson Channel. We activated an operation named Operation River Dominance. So most of these arrests that we made were because of, uh, we're during the course of this operation. We're able to, we have a riverine command post where within uh, the creeks and waterways. So we're able to um, man and establish choke points there. And because of that, we made uh, several arrests. Commandant Tambuwa called for stronger interagency alliance among security operatives in the fight against oil theft in the maritime domain. Executive Officer Nigerian Navy Ship NNS Pathfinder stood in for the commander Oluashi Akon and described the synergy between the Navy and the NSCDC as encouraging, maintaining that the relationship will continue. He expressed happiness that all the previous suspects handed over to the NSCDC for prosecution were radically handled. I can assure you, sir, that uh, the relationship between us and you it's uh, a very wonderful one and we will always uh, maintain it so we need each other to work be rest assured your handover of these exhibits will put more courage on us to join hands together and affirm our synergy in the area of giving a saving form for the national economy both agencies acknowledge the effort of the River State Government in pulling forces together by all stakeholders to see to the end of oil theft. There was also a joint patrol by the Navy and the NSCDC officers on Isaka waterways. Still in River State, the State Government Tax Force visited several waterfront communities in the Dobu axis of Port Harcourt. A bitter relief marked for demolition and told residents to vacate within seven days. This was in reference to Governor Wicker's crackdown on identified criminal hideouts in Port Harcourt Township and Uluabushi access of Odubu in his 2022 New Year's address. But the victims expressed displeasure over the insensitivity of the state government towards the uh, displaced people. Few days after the demolition of waterfront communities in the Diabu axis of Port Harcourt, some victims said that they were now homeless and without food. Some of the affected women narrated their ordeals to our correspondent who visited the area. Even if we were to pack, Cozy demands that, yes, they told us that on the 26th they are coming to destroy this place, but not this place. That they had to go drown the waterside and because there's an old road and the road does not connect to this building. And if the, the, the Honorable Governor, His Excellency, want to do this, Cozy demands, God, for God's fearing sake, you should remember people. I am a civil servant. As I see, as you see now, have, now road now, just say. They, no, we are out to yourself, no, no problem. No help, no body. That's how today when they scatter self. My junior star, you're born. 
If you say them video, I say for good. Them children are born without no treatment, no nothing. As, as I talk to you, say outside, outside now she did. We voted you in as a governor, not for you to keep us homeless. It is so wrong. Endurance Ododo, who is visually impaired, also explained how it's been difficult for him since the demolition. Since our Saturday till now, this one one week one week on two days now at the outside. Without no no help, no nothing. I just I just day alone with my family. Some of the market women called on the government to reconsider its plans, adding that it was their financial status that relegated them to the area. To rent a shop now or go my one market. If you know hundred and something thousand, they know will give you space. And yeah, now free. May they help us a bit. We they pay some more, some more money. I don't stay here now. I they go 60 years. This water side. Now I stay group. Where my Macari trained me, I come out. And this water side, where you see, like this. Now we pour more to the, come build this house so that we go fish stay here, they get fish. Chairman of the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations in River State, Enefa George, who condemned the incident, said it is estimated that over 10,000 persons would be rendered homeless and driven into poverty by the loss of livelihoods and other hardships associated with homelessness and displacement. The leg of sale for government, come carry the blame, come put for our head. You know they're possible. Anyways, International instrument, that one be said, international law, then where Nigeria said don't sign, they're against forced eviction. You know, go just evict people from their houses like that. You go, first of all, before you evict people, you go enter a meeting with them, you go agree with them, you go, you go create alternative places for them. The people say they have written to the governor to express their concerns and request an urgent audience with him to discuss how to address the issues. It's now time for a short break. We'll be right back with more.